There are a ton of videos on YouTube about how to install these. What are these? Well, they go by a ton of different names. Recess lights, puck lights, wafer lights, can lights, pot lights. The list goes on and on and it gets pretty confusing. And almost all of those videos say you do not have to get into your attic to install them. Well, in my 30 years, I'm installing hundreds of these in many different homes. There's only one time where I did not have to get into an attic. It was a two-story house. The lights were on the first floor. The only way for me to access the wiring between the two floors was to get in the bedroom upstairs, pull back the carpet, cut through the wooden subfloor, route my wires through all the joists and the beams supporting the second floor, put the subfloor back, put the carpet back, and nobody ever knew I was there. So if you wanna know how to install these safely, efficiently, and quickly without damaging your home or yourself, this is the video for you. Now trying to install lights like this without getting into your attic, it would be like trying to change the oil in your car from the comfort of the driver's seat without ever opening the hood. It's just not gonna happen. So in this video, we're gonna show you step-by-step step how we install these lights. And we're not gonna just show you the hows, we're gonna explain the whys of why we're doing each step. And with Halo's Quick Link Low Voltage Kit, there's hardly any wiring involved. And the minimal wiring that you do have to do, anybody can do it. Let's get started. So what is our first step? Well, we need a way to turn on our new lights, right? And we're gonna do that through what's called a switch leg. What is a switch leg? Well, over here at this house, it's a coil of wire about right here in the attic, and it comes down to this box, and we're gonna wire it to our new switch, hence switch leg. And the beauty about the term switch leg, every single electrician in America knows exactly what you mean when you say switch leg. Now on this project, we had our electricians come out during the rough electrical stage and they ran a switch leg from this box to the attic and it's ready to go for us. So if you're doing a big remodel like we are, have your electricians do the same thing and it's gonna save you a big headache when it comes time to install your new lights. Now for most people watching this video, you're gonna have a single gang box, just one switch, right? Controlling a fan and or light in the middle of the room. And this bedroom actually had a single gang box when we started but we upgraded it to a two gang box so we could have two switches or more even. But don't worry gang, we filmed the whole thing. We show you how to convert a single gang box to a two gang box with no drywall patches. Then we came over here, removed the old ceiling fan and found it was installed terribly. We had to redo the whole thing. We installed the new fan rated box to support our ceiling fan. You can see we got the new one going on right here. Then we ran a cable from the new box across the ceiling all the way down through the top plates into our new two gang box. So if your electrician can't do it, you can run those switch legs and you can even run the switch leg for your new recessed lighting. It's a great video. We'll put a link below in the description. Make sure you go check it out. So now that you've watched that video and you've got all your wiring done or your electrician has done it for you, you are ready for step number two, lighting location. Now there's no secret formula for light location, right? Obviously you don't want them too close to the wall and you don't want them all clustered in the middle of the room. The biggest factor that's gonna determine where you put your lights is your framing location. Where are your ceiling joists? So we used our magnet and blue tape to help us locate our ceiling joists. The last thing you wanna do is drill a four inch hole and you find out there's a ceiling joist right there. Now there are some lights called wafer lights that will allow you to put a light over a joist, but with our lights we're using today, we can't have a joist in the way. Now this is a great visual aid for us. Let's pull out the tape measure and figure out our final location for our new lighting. Now I like the lights about three feet from the walls. Let's pull out our tape measure, go to the side wall, and as you can see, three feet puts us right here where my left hand is. That is pretty close to the joist and we're gonna interfere with it. So let's bump over to the other side of the joist and maybe use 42. What do you think, Jordan, you like, yeah, that? I like that? All right, so if we're 42 on this side, we want everything symmetrical, right? Let's go to that side and see if 42 works over there. So 42 is perfect right here. We won't hit any joist. So now let's mark the ceiling for all four of our lights using 42 as our number. Then we're gonna show you a little trick how to be sure that you're not gonna hit any blocking that somebody might've put in there later. Now all our hole locations are marked. 
but we don't want to grab our four inch hole saw or our six inch hole saw just yet. There's one more step we want to do to ensure we spend as little time in that 140 degree Louisiana attic as possible. What are we going to do? I've got a 3 16 inch bit in my drill and I'm going to drill it right there where X marks the spot. Easy. Now I've got a piece of wire. I just used a piece of number 14 Romex. A piece of coat hanger wire works great also. And I've got it bent into this special shape. What's so special about it? This dimension is just over the radius of our light. Got a four inch can light. This is about two and a quarter. And both of these are equal and I'm gonna show you why. Now I'll be able to put that in that hole, just like that. And now I can spin it. I'm gonna work my way around and see how it's going 360 degrees. That means I'm not hitting anything. I can even move it up or down to check for any blocking that's higher up. In our experience, sometimes we have a block right here or there was a patch and there's some blocking supporting that patch. Who knows what's in the attic, right? Now, if I were to hit something, say that was a hard stop, this one's telling me where it is. I know it's right here in the attic. Then I can adjust. If it's right here, I can move that hole an inch over that way or an inch over that way and I don't have to patch this hole. It's still within the bigger hole we're gonna cut. So now that we know we're all clear, let's grab our hole saw set to four inches and cut these holes. Now there are lots of ways to cut the hole for these lights. The simplest is probably the drywall saw if you're just doing a few. All these light kits come with a template. Put that up on your ceiling, scribe the outside edge and follow that with your drywall saw. And it doesn't even have to be perfect because this big old flange right here is gonna cover any imperfections in your cut. An upgrade from that would definitely be a standard hole saw that we usually all have in our toolbox. You can even buy a half dome bowl that goes on your drill down here and it catches most of the dust. But we do this so much, we have the ultimate hole saw. This one's completely adjustable, collects all the dust and makes a square cut with the ceiling. Now I've had this a while. I'll try to find some information on this and put it in the description below, but check out how slick this thing works. Ta-da! Easy peasy. Now we have found that this rubber seal right here gets dusty and it makes a mark on our freshly painted ceiling. So I take a clean rag and I just wipe it off every time. Now let's do the rest. All right, man, super easy. That took like 60 seconds to drill four holes. <laughs> what? I didn't mean to hit you. <laughs> this is the expensive camera. Sorry. It'll be fine. <laughs> Now normally when I head into an attic to install lights, I am fully suited up with my tool bags, right? I got my hammer, strippers, screwdrivers, wire nuts, cable staples, the whole deal. But today, thanks to our good friends at Halo, they sent us their quick link low voltage kit and I don't need hardly any of that. This thing is pretty awesome, check it out. We have a single power supply right here, we're gonna show you that in the attic, and our cable, our Romex, attaches to that. Attached to this power supply is this 35 foot low voltage cable where you can put up to eight lights. The kit comes with four, but you can buy them separately and add four more if you need it in your application. And these things are awesome, fully dimmable. You can put them in a shower. They'll last you 22 years. Five selectable colors, just like all our favorite Halo products. And of course, LED, you can't go wrong. So what's in the box? You get four of these lights. We just happen to be using the four inch ones just like that. We're gonna talk about how it connects later. Now let's start with the heart of the system, the power supply. And there are a ton of features in this thing. Let's start with this end. It is actually hinged right there. So if you're installing this from the ground level and you're trying to sneak this into a ceiling space or an inaccessible attic, it allows you to do that. And once you've got it straightened out in the attic, it's got a little latch to keep it straight. Pretty cool. Now let's open up the junction box and you'll see immediately we've got two integral clamps for your NM cable. It also has a knockout if you're using flex or MC or something like that. There's a little cap inside. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute. And there's simply the three wires inside, the hot, the neutral, and the ground. Also factory installed wire connectors. You don't even need a wire nut. Nice. Now let's go to the other end. We've got 40 feet of low voltage self-healing cable. And this is what we're gonna attach our lights to. It's very easy and we don't need any tools to do it. Now this is 40 feet long, like I said, enough to do most rooms. But what happens if you cut it and can you cut it? 
Yes, you can cut it, but just know that you can't get that length back. You can't splice it back together. So it's just recommended to leave it long and to loop the wire together at the end with this enclosed cable tie. But whether you cut it or not, you must use this cap to cover up the exposed wires on the end. And while lighting your house with low voltage wiring is a step up in technology, protecting your home with wiring is a step down in technology, which is why we're so excited to thank the sponsor of today's video, Simply Safe. Simply Safe was kind enough to send us a full on alarm kit, and we are super impressed with the entire system. The build quality of each component is fantastic, and the setup couldn't be easier. All of the components connect wirelessly to the base station and there are sensors for every application. Some of my personal favorites are the glass breaking sensor that listens for glass breaking frequencies, a water detection sensor that can save you costly repairs in case of a broken pipe, and a temperature sensor that can alert you in case of a hard freeze. We can monitor everything through the app and if something happens, Simply Safe is backed by 24-7 monitoring ready to dispatch police, firefighters, or EMTs. The peace of mind it gives me and my family is priceless. All we ask, you try it out for 60 days, and if you don't like it, send it back. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Go to simplysafe.com slash studpack to learn more, and thanks again, Simply Safe. So let me gather the few tools that I do need, and we'll head into the attic and show you how awesome this thing really is. And our goal is to get in and out of this attic in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Woo! Let me know how it goes. All right, thanks. Here's our switch leg. This is from the old fixture in the middle of the room. We just saved it. There's nothing wrong with this cable. It's got a ground. So our electrician just saved this up here. And here's the new 14.3 we ran to our fan. So let's find a good location to mount this guy and get it wired up. I'm kind of liking this location right here for our power supply. It's protected by this ductwork, so nobody's gonna trip on it if they're ever climbing up here. I got quite a bit of cable, so I'm going to just loop it around like that. The switch is off, and it's not even connected in the box. So I'm totally safe. I'm going to use my knife, slit the sheathing, pull it back. You're already dripping. I know. Wow. I almost bought a thermometer so we could show everybody just how hot it is in here. What do you think it is? One, 120 at least. At least. Yeah. I'm going to strip those. All right, we are ready. I'm going to open the cover, get these guys out of the way. Use my pocket knife. We're going to remove this little cap. There we go. Just like that. And now that's going to grab the sheathing on my NM cable. Put it down so I can press. There we go. Nice. Three wires to connect, and we are done with the wiring, dude. That's pretty incredible, huh? Yeah, and you just get to poke them in, right? Yep. One. Two. Three. Wired up. Awesome. Let's fold these around, make it nice and neat in the box. Close the cover. Screw it down. I only brought two screws, man. I usually bring an extra in case I drop it in this insulation. All right. There's one. Oh. Not going to be able to get to that one. I can't get the other one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I can. Yeah, you got it. I got it. You got it. Oh. Careful. Oh, dropped it. Oh. Got it. <laughs> These happen to be stainless steel. That's why they're not sticking to my magnetic bit. Only the best for stud pack, right? Stainless steel screws all the time. There we go. A little bit of an angle, nice. but it's secure. We'll just latch that. Yeah. Nice. I brought a staple. Why don't we put a staple in it? Sure, Dad. Actually, I'm going to mid it around that way and put it right there. And again, maybe putting it under the duct wasn't the best idea. Was that your idea or mine? We're gonna hammer sideways. Perfect, we are done. Cool. Yeah, our first light location is actually right here. Yep. So we'd immediately hit this plywood. Yep. And then uh, we hit that plywood. Yep. And we got this strong back that we have to go over. Right. So a lot so, easier doing it from up here. So while we're up here, we might as well just run the self-healing cable to each location. All right. Sounds like you want me to be up here a little longer. I'm up here with you, man. You are. I appreciate that. This is the mental, the mental support, right? Yeah. You know what I could do? I could just... Give yourself a little loop, a little extra. I could just push it right through there, huh? Yeah. And then we can easily find it from downstairs. Perfect. Yep. So I'm going to crawl down there, do that one. Yep. And I'll catch the corner, and on my way back, I'll do this one, and we'll coil up the excess. Cool. You know what? I'm just going to stick the end in there. 
and I can coil it up downstairs yep. and put the whole thing in. Yeah, let's get out of let's here. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Whew. Man, that was just five minutes. Yeah. I'm trying to show how sweaty I was, but I'll take a high five. Here. All right, we're down from the attic, and as you can see, there's all our low voltage cable, and this is the simplest, easiest part. Anybody can do this. This section comes from the factory like that. You simply unscrew it, and this piece becomes separate. And can you see that groove in there? Yep. That is the groove for the low voltage cable. And see the pins here? That's what pierces the insulation and makes contact with the wire inside. And that slot in there is where the cable goes. And it doesn't matter if I go this way or the other way. Polarity doesn't matter on the low voltage stuff. So let's slide that in there all the way to the bottom. Now these can only go together one way. You'll just have to figure it out, but I already see that they go together this way. And then you simply tighten this part that's in my left hand. See how I'm tightening that? And it's gonna push the cable down and push the pins against the conductors. It is that simple, we are done. We got a light? We got a light. Here's our color selector switch. We've got it on 3500, put it wherever you want. 2700, all the way up to 5000K. We're gonna push everything up in the ceiling. And these little springs are pretty strong. There we go. You ready, bud? Yep. I'm gonna let it go. Done. How easy was that? Wow. No tools required. All right, gang, last one. That little cap we talked about earlier, now it's time to put it on. Go right in there. The bottom's out. And you got a little cover. <laughs> I'm still sweaty from being in the attic. Everything's slippery. There we go. And we're done, completely protected. Nice. Now I'm gonna pull this out until it's a little tight, right? Let's get all the excess out. There we go. I'll put in my new light here and we'll bundle up all this excess tail with the cable tie. Try not to move it as. Make sure we're set right. There's all our excess low voltage cable. We're gonna use this reusable zip tie. Keep it all together. Now we put all this in the attic and we are ready for a dimmer and power it up. Notice the gasket right there, seals against the drywall. Pretty cool. I found it easier to put one end like that, Jordan. Push it all the way over and then bend the other one all the way up. And let it go. Without seeing the gasket. There we go. Awesome job, dude, cool. right here. All right, gang, all of our LED lights are in, and now it's time to install our switch. We're actually gonna use a dimmer. We always use a dimmer on our LEDs, but before we even stick a finger in that box, let's head out to the panel and turn off the power. Here we are out at the panel, and we actually made a drawing of the whole house. We used this for our permit, too, and we labeled it with every circuit in the house. We know that our lighting circuit in the master bath is 10A. Let's go ahead and turn that one off. All right, now let's head back inside, confirm that's the one, and we'll get to work. All right, I can see our ceiling fan is now off. Our drawing tells us this whole room is one circuit, but let's double check it and triple check it. I'm gonna show you two different ways. This is a Klein non-contact voltage indicator. Green light means it's ready to go. We put it against the hot wires here, and it remains green. If those were hot, it would turn red and beep. Here's another way to check it. I have a Fluke T5600 meter. I know these are my hots right here. I'm gonna to go to ground with one lead and check these and we are all safe. So let's remove this fan remote that we temporarily installed and install our new dimmer. So we're gonna use a Lutron Diva dimmer. It's rated for LED lights and we love these things. Of course, we're gonna go with all new white devices in this house and these dimmers are suitable for single pole applications where you have one switch or three way applications where you have two switches. We're just gonna use it for a single pole application right now so the red wire with the white stripe gets capped. If you wanna see us install this in a three-way application, let us know in the comments and we'll be sure to get that done. All right, dude, let's put in this dimmer. All right, our box is all open. Let me sort out the wiring for you. This wire right here, 120 volts into the box. Of course, we have our ground right here. They're all bonded together with that green wire nut with the hole in the top. Now, whenever I install a fan box in a bedroom, dining room, anywhere else, I always put in 14.3 or 12.3 if it's a 20 amp circuit and it's got three conductors. We're not gonna count the ground right now, but I've got a switch leg for the light, I've got a switch leg for the fan, and they both share the same neutral. But in this case, this fan light only needs one wire. And that's more and more the case now, right? That fan has a receiver in it, and the remote basically is a transmitter. 
So we're actually gonna cap this red wire, but it's always there in the future. So that one gets capped. This one is our switch leg to the fan, and this one is our switch leg to our recessed lights. Couldn't be any simpler. Let me get a bit of wire, get our switches ready, and we'll wire this thing up. All right, it's time to put in the dimmer and the switch, and I always start with the grounds. As you can see, the dimmer right here has a ground attached to it at the factory, but the switch did not and they both must be bonded to the ground in the box. The switch has to be bonded by this ground screw. So I put a piece of copper on there, and that's a pigtail. I simply grabbed it from the piece of Romex right here, and I pulled it out. So now that I have my two grounds right here, I'm gonna attach them with a wire nut to this one and bond all three together. Simple as that, and we're done. Now our next step, why don't we attach the switch legs? So on the dimmer, it's this red one. It's gonna go right here. That's my switch leg for the can lights. Simple as that. Now let's put on the switch leg on the single pole switch. Now you'll notice that both of those screws are gold, so it doesn't matter which one it goes on. You can put the switch leg there and put 120 volts here, or you can put the switch leg there and 120 volts on the other screw. It doesn't matter. The other thing you're gonna notice we have the push-in feature on the back. You could push this wire in there, but we never use that. Now, a lot of people are tempted to put a loop in this wire, just like I did in the ground, and put it around this screw. But you don't even need to do that. You see that plate right there? That is a clamping plate. That wire is designed to go underneath, and when you tighten the screw, the clamping plate is gonna clamp down on the wire for a very secure connection. So let's put our switch leg right here, tighten this down, and then we're ready to power this thing up. And what advice do you have for people doing this at home where they might feel like they could get confused with which wire goes where? Well, remember how we sorted it out at the beginning? We knew which one was our hot, right here, right? Right. And we're gonna come off of this and feed both switches. Switch leg for our fan light, switch leg for our new can lights, and then all the grounds go together, and all the neutrals are already connected in the back of the box. Right, but they might look in the back and see the black wires and they all look the same. So how do you know that this one is your incoming power and that one's your switch leg? I know it's incoming power because, see this wire nut right here? Mm -hmm. I've got three wires under it. I've got incoming power, and I've got power going out, probably to a receptacle, and then I've got our pigtail for this box, for the devices in this box. So that's how I know that that is my power. If you really want to double check, you could take this off and find out which one is power, this one or this one. But because we put this box in a while ago, I already know that that's my power. Okay. All right. And I guess if you were doing this for the first time and you ran your switch leg by yourself, you can always put a piece of tape on it or something, right? To identify? Yeah. Sure. So here's 120 volts into the box. I'm going to connect that wire to it to power the, the dimmer. And I got my pigtail here to power up my single pole switch on the right. I'm not pre-twisting. I, I usually don't pre-twist 14 because the wire nut, as you can see, is doing a great job of doing that for me. It's just an extra step I feel like I don't have to do. If I'm going, uh, if I'm connecting larger number 12 wire, then I'll pre-twist with my pliers. I'll just cut this pigtail. We don't need all that wire. Strip it. And this is our last connection. This one goes right here, same thing, under the clamping plate. I was taught to put it on that side, but it doesn't matter. The guy that taught me to do that said when you tighten this screw, it tends to tighten this way and pull this wire. But to me, under the clamping plate, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna move. All right, gang, it's all wired up. Now let's walk through it one more time so we can compare notes and make sure we both understand what's going on. So I got the ground from the dimmer. I've got the grounding pigtail from the single pole switch, all bonded together to my grounds in the box. All the neutrals are tied together back here in the box. The spare wire for the three-way feature of the dimmer is capped. I've got the other red wire on the switch leg to my can lights. On this side, on the single pole switch, I've got 120 volts feeding the switch, 120 volts feeding the dimmer, and here's my switch leg going to the fan. We're all done. Let's fold everything up nice and neat in the box, attach our switches and our cover plate, and we're ready to go. Don't just stuff everything in there, gang. Learn to fold your wires nice and neat. And then what I always do, these screws are gonna be hot, right? They're exposed, so I always put the ground on the other side. See that? If I were to put this ground on that side, that's not gonna be very good. Now, a lot of people will wrap this with tape to protect those screws. I'll do that on a metal box, but not on a plastic box. 
All right, that's going to push in nice, and that's going to push in nice. I'm going to break these off because they're interfering with that switch. And uh, this is basically a heat sink, this aluminum. And these are designed to be snapped off. Back in the day, I'm going to digress, Jordan, here for a little bit, all right? Back in the day when these were controlling incandescent or halogen lights, this would get pretty hot because dimming creates heat. And when you snap these off, you derate the dimmer. You can't have as many lights on, but with LED lights, it doesn't matter. So that's a whole subject in itself, derating a dimmer. So I'm just gonna snap those off. We'll get the screws and we'll put it all together. And we are all done. We have come a long way from that old blue room with an old ceiling fan in the middle. Now we have three switches over here, full dimming capability on our LED lights. We can control the fan, three speeds, and we can even dim the light on the fan kit. And these halo LED lights bring a whole modern dimension to this room. Look how dark it gets when I turn them off, bud. It doesn't even look like the fan light is on, does it? And those halo lights are so easy to install, we know that anybody can do it. So run a switch leg to your like button, smash it for us, ask a question, drop a comment, and we will see you on our next video.